time for your bedtime story in this classic English gothic haunting movie. We are talking The Haunting of Radcliffe House, also known as Altar. And this is written and directed by Nick Willing, a 2014 uh, kind of horror movie that was, I believe, funded on Kickstarter. And this one stars Olivia Williams, who is most notable, I, I would say, for her roles in British kind of dramas. But you do have a little bit of international talent with Matthew Modine here, who's kind of probably the most recognisable name. And yes, this is a classic haunted house movie with a kind of mystery, ghosts, suspicion, eeriness. It's all kind of going on in this movie. What is the story? Well, it takes it takes place um, in the kind of the, the moors in Yorkshire. And we have this... Uh, manor, this kind of, uh, this old stately manor which has been seemingly abandoned uh, because it's had a dark past and it's been purchased by a wealthy American and this American has essentially wants to do it up to kind of, you know, sell it and all that kind of stuff. So he hires Olivia Williams who is a uh, kind of a person who does up old properties and kind of restores them and things like that. And her and her family are actually moving into this house so she can kind of do her work. So that's what she's doing there. And she brings her husband, Matthew Modine's character, who is kind of like an artist who is having a little bit of a dry spell, and her two children, uh, her teenage daughter and her younger son. And whilst they're there, they kind of learn about the dark past that surrounds this house, including a murder-suicide, ritual sacrifice, all that kind of good stuff. And the locals are understandably a little bit kind of a sort of wary of this kind of particular house and this supernatural presence soon makes itself felt affecting all of this kind of family in kind of different ways and uh, it may well threaten their lives now what will happen you'll have to watch the movie and find out so what do we think works in this movie now as i've said this is kind of your gothic kind of style almost BBC like drama that you would see that they put on a kind of Christmas back in the kind of like the uh, the 90s and things like that it kind of feels like that and maybe that's a reference that may, some people may not understand but you know it does feel like a, a very British kind of haunted house movie uh, unraveling a kind of a mystery uh, with low tech kind of special effects more about the kind of the atmosphere um, and the kind of the, the unraveling of the kind of the uh, the layers of this mystery rather than kind of jump scares and uh, gore or any kind of thing like that. Uh, the real star of this movie for me, however, is the location, both it being set in the kind of the Yorkshire Moors, which, you know, many kind of horror kind of stories have been set there and there it has its kind of uh, dark history in real life as well. But it also, you know, even a little bit kind of close to the home, you have that kind of this, this house, which is a great kind of location for, uh, you know, a spooky tale, because it really does have this uh, eerie kind of gothic ambience to it, which I think really does uh, help the movie. There is an interesting kind of mystery involved here in regards to what has happened to the, pa the past and how it kind of informs our, our current kind of cast of characters. Admittedly, it's a little bit derivative of what you've seen before. We'll come on to it, but nonetheless, you know, it is what it is. I think um, Olivia Williams does a pretty good performance here, I have to say. Um, you know, she's quite engaging as this kind of like this working mum who is trying to kind of like corral her family, but also kind of get on with the kind of the work. And there are a, a couple of supporting roles that I kind of quite enjoy as well from the locals and things like that. And my, my things, I think, for the most part, is pretty good at sort of one or two kind of cheesy kind of uh, sequences but for the most part he is um uh, fairly kind of good as well um one of the other items i kind of like I, I would say i liked here is the kind of the way this kind of spirits interact differently with the kind of the uh um you know the different people in this house uh for example they essentially we see uh, matthew Medine's character cut his hand uh and he seems to be the one that's ultimately most affected and almost kind of possessed, uh, whilst the children seem to be seeing more kind of visual representations of this kind of uh, white woman in white and things like this, but Olivia Williams is the one that's having to sort of ultimately kind of unravel what, what's kind of going on there. There's some fun little kind of like um, sequences where we get kind of, sh this, for example, this, this ghost whisperer turn up. He's kind of quite a fun character. and There's another character that turns up as well. 
that again I thought was some some quite fun sequences. Um, no, so you know it does have that sort of spooky kind of mystery that you might be kind of interested. It's a slower burn movie, and like I said, it's not exactly thrilling, uh, but it's an interesting mystery to a point. What doesn't work for me, um, I have to be honest with you, I think some of the the younger actors here are seem a little bit experienced and uh, inexperienced. Sorry. Um, and I think, you know, that kind of shows on screen. And as I say, Matthew Medine even has a couple of kind of shaky lines here and there. Um, the the low, low kind of tech effects, unfortunately, I think are, don't help this movie. Uh, we see this kind of woman in white and it looks like kind of 80s video effects, like, you know, sort of overlays, essentially, and things like that. It looks like video effects. Um, but not like CGI, we're talking kind of like, you know, overlaying and things like that. It doesn't look particularly good, you know, it doesn't really look all that scary, I have to say. Um, I don't know, maybe they could have found another way to kind of deal with that. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but the effects here, I say, are, aren't particularly kind of uh, top of the agenda. It is more about kind of creating that atmosphere and that, um, the you know, the, the, the creepy kind of ambience, but... When we do see a little bit more overt, it kind of ultimately looks a little silly at times. I think one of the, the, the big critiques I think mo many people have of, of how this clearly is influenced by other properties. I mean, I think the most obvious one is The Shining, where we have this kind of the house or this kind of the spirits within this house sort of take over Matthew Modine's character um, and kind of making him into a kind of a essentially a possessed killer. Uh, very much like, you know, Jack Nicholson's character in The kind of the Shining. I mean, they actually directly reference Weathering Heights, and I feel that kind of, uh, that is influenced on this movie as well. But there's also plenty of other things it feels like it's influenced by, like the works of James Herbert, I would suggest, because he does a lot of kind of that, he did a kind of a, a lot of that kind of style of, 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 of horror in his books and things like this. But it, it, it kind of feels like any number of properties that, are, that have sort of come out, certainly from the UK, um, that have this kind of mystery haunting kind of thing where we, we're trying to find out what has happened and ultimately that will, uh, you know, determine what happens to our kind of modern characters and things like this. So it, it, unfortunately the story is a little bit derivative and I think it, it borrows a little bit too much uh, from some of the other kind of uh, existing properties to... To really have any kind of like um, voice of its own, so to speak, uh, it, 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 I have to be honest with you. It maybe gets a little bit dull at times. I think partially it's because you feel like this movie is just treading old ground, and you're not really particularly engaged because of that. I mean, I don't think necessarily the not the the, the, the film is necessarily bad. It just feels like a retread of, of much stuff you've seen before. And therefore, it, it, it really fails to ignite much of a kind of, uh, you know, enthralling kind of watching and stuff like that. There are some skills behind the camera. I think the, the movie is relatively kind of well shot on what is clearly a kind of a low budget. And as I say, I think Williams does the best she can in this role. And it's quite good. But it does have that kind of spooky atmosphere. So if you do like that kind of BBC kind of style uh, haunted house movie, if that makes sense, then... You may want to check it out, but it is, it is a little bit derivative of other works and ultimately not a particularly kind of uh, a movie that you, I think anyone would want to re-watch. It may be an okay one-time watch. And as such, I'll give this movie a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.